So now let's talk about where investment casting and MIM kind of diverge when we're specifically talking about alloys. Um, so one big area where they diverge is in aluminum. Um, investment casting, we, we definitely investment cast a lot of aluminum, whereas you would never MIM aluminum. You would use a traditional die cast process for that. Another area where you're going to see a large divergence is anything that's a high nickel alloy, so, um, such as like Inconel, Manel, Hastelloy, stuff like that. Um, and then even your duplexes and super duplexes, um, we will pour in the investment casting process, um, but not MIM those. Um, vice versa, an area where they kind of share um, alloys for specialty alloys would be in your high cobalt alloys like your stellites, um, as well as your uh, cobars. Um, so where you're looking for those uh, low uh, coefficient of thermal expansions. Um, an area where MIM actually uh, can create a material that investment cast would be in net, like a nitronic 60 alloy. Um, OptiMIM offers that. Um, for specific applications where um, it cannot be poured in an investment casting process. So where we see a lot of divergence between the investment casting and MIM is really in those aluminum and high nickel steels. So um, traditionally that's in aerospace and defense type work. Um, usually a lot of the parts that we're gonna be investment casting in aluminum um, are gonna be conversions from a billet material. So they were designed or originally designed to be a 60-61 or a 70-75 part. Um, and just because of either supply chain or cost, um, they're turned into uh, an investment casting. Um, a lot of the advantages is you know through the investment casting process, um, if we do our job correctly, we can make sure that part directionally solidifies very well and will actually solidify um, in a pressure chamber. So it has a very billet-like quality as far as the material goes um, and you get a lot of net shape geometry basically for free and you're not paying for all that um, additional billet material that is just you know cut into chips um, the other application is those high nickel steels that i mentioned um, your ink canals your nails you know applications where it's a very high heat resistant alloys um, investment casting obviously offers a benefit for net shape um, because you don't have to machine those surfaces and a lot of them can be used as is, um, as well as when we start talking about ceramic cores and even soluble cores, there's geometries that we can form with the investment casting process um, that can't even be machined. So this is uh, moving on. This is probably one of my favorite slides. Um, and I'll let John start here, but uh, this might answer a lot of uh, questions or this is probably answering you know 99 out of 100 questions when we start comparing investment casting and MIM processes.